and welcome back. Today we have another Tales of Tribute game. I shall be going Amalexia and Druid King as usual. Let's see what my opponent is going for. Um, he does get to go first, which is usually an advantage. Um, Hualu, okay. Anyway, going first is usually an advantage because um, you get the first pick of the best card of the lot. That's why going second lets you have an extra gold coin at the start to mitigate that. Uh, not quite sure what he's going to go next for the last patron, but Hualu plus Druid King plus Amalexia and Pelin. Okay, so it's a very... He, he picked the first two patrons, the most simple of all the patrons. He goes first. I'm very, very lucky in this case because I have five gold coins and I'm going second, which means I can buy the extremely powerful six cost cards. He's probably going to pick up Philanthropy, but I have a choice between Right Collar and Armory. Um, I did think a while about this decision because... It actually might be correct to pick the right caller first, but uh, then again, armory is five power and one gold every time you draw it. It's that's which is kind of insanely good. It's good at killing other agents, including the right caller. So um, and he picks envoy up, which I think is a fine pickup um, if your opponent can't deal with it. But we have an armory in our deck, so we can deal with it. Um, at this point, I really want to just draw the armory as fast as possible and try to rush my opponent down, which is, I think, is a fair strategy. So that's why I'm using the Harvest Seasons. Um, I guess it's possible not to not to just not reveal more cards of the tavern. Maybe he would have might got something good off it. That is also possible. So I wouldn't fault you. I wouldn't fault my decision if I didn't buy those uh, draw cards from the tavern. He does get Envoy, so it's a good thing I... I mean, in this case, it's a good thing I used those draw cards because I was able to draw the Armory to kill the Envoy card. So I guess it worked out in the end. I mean, if I were him, pick up the Rack Picker. Very simple choice. He is not getting rid of his power, uh, his Helen power token, which I disagree with. Uh, I pick up that. That's quite a good Amalexia card. It's it, it's good for late. It's good for later in the game if I manage to pick up a couple more Amalexia cards because it draws a card with the combo. That's fine. Um, like like in this case, I get to I get to draw a card with the combo. So let's see if I'm able to af afford the right caller because I picked up the Lesson of I Am combo, draw a card to... Yep, that's that's enough to pick up the right color. So that's the next best card in the lot. I'm happy to pick it up. Very annoying. I will have to deal with the Black Sacrament eventually, but that's fine. I use Pellet Power, which is not a very common power to use, but uh, it's good to <laughs> ensure that I draw my right color next turn. Uh, my opponent knows this, so it's possible he would want to pick up the Black Sacrament to stop me from killing his Envoy next turn, or he keeps the Black, or maybe he's going to keep the Black Sacrament in order to. Um, uh, he buys Hand of Amalexia, which is a combo, so he does get to lock away two of my best cards. I don't even need to check it because these are the only two cards that I bought that are in my cooldown that are clearly the best cards in my deck. So in this case, I am 100% going to buy Black Sacrament. Uh, to kill Han, and then I'm going to pick up the Festival of Four Barons, which is a good combo with my Amalexia cards. You can use that one, uh, one, one treasury, get our economy a bit better. Right now the tavern's not looking too great. Shield Bearer is probably the best card. That Lalu card my opponent just picked up is very, very bad. It's only good if you combo with Lalu, and he doesn't really have any Lalu cards in his deck, so he needs to be very lucky to be able to use it. Um, small mistake here, I don't kill my opponent's agent before using my own right caller, which gives him an extra gold next turn, which can be annoying. I pick up the shield bearer, which will help protect my right caller, although I don't think he has the ability to kill uh, my agents at this point, because he's not really generating a lot of power. Meanwhile, I have a very, very insane deck. I'm very, very far ahead of my opponent at this stage, um, but it's still important to when you're looking back at things to understand what kind of mistakes you made. Maybe I'm playing a bit more casually because I feel like I'm very far ahead, but like I said previous, that last turn, I could have killed his agent before I activated my own agent. I gave him two extra coin for no reason, which was completely unnecessary. Uh, hostile Takeover. I see he's drawing Hostile Takeover next, but there's literally nothing that he can buy except for the Bankrai Sentries, which I don't think is that great a card for him at the moment. It's just, I, I'm not scared of it, so I'll, I'll let him buy it, no problem. I have no issues with that. Uh, we do draw a Lesson of IM, which will help cycle through our deck a bit better. I am just going for the Rally right now. Like, my deck is, I have a lot of extremely high cost and extremely high power cards. I have multiple ways to win. I could just draw my uh, Pelin cards, naturally. I Plalu is active, 
which means another very legitimate way to win is to simply just use the Hualu power over and over again while um, just buying the most expensive cards. I'm gonna get rid of that Black Sacrament almost certainly because that's not very useful for her. And right now the tavern is pretty barren at the moment. Let, let, let's just see what we can get out of the uh, opponent's deck. Yeah, let's not let him draw that because... I mean, Hostile Takeover, what does it do? It buys him like custom seeds. He, he can't really buy anything at the tavern at this point, so I don't see any reason not to let him have the Hlalu card. But at this stage, uh, there's multiple ways for me to win. I have one Armory and one Rally in my deck, so that's just an insane amount of power every turn. And I also have a Right Caller this entire time, which my opponent has been unable to answer, which means I uh, have a couple of Wisp Heart Totems in my deck, which means I have a lot of gold available, which can be used to buy expensive cards, which leads to Hlalu Patron victory as well. So there's, those are my two um, main victory uh, conditions at this point in time. Um, I'm almost certainly going to buy Hlalu Kinsman at this point because that will just speed me up even faster. I could have alternatively... Uh, I buy Luxury Exports because I to deny my opponent that card, but it is very possible that I should have bought it. Like, I don't think... I, I, mm, it's possible I could have let my opponent have it and and it would have been fine. Like, it's a, it's a nice card, but it also dilutes my deck. At this stage, I'm actually more concerned with deck dilution rather than uh, getting gold. And to deny my opponent that is, is fine too, but I mean, I'm so far ahead that I feel like I must just start speeding towards the win rather than anything. Uh, 19 prestige. I can probably win in two turns. I already have. I already drew the Hlalu Kinsman that I got the last turn, so that one's going to get turned into prestige with the Hlalu power. My right call is still unanswered. I'm going to generate a lot of gold. Um, yeah, Druid King is good at generating gold. The only question is how do you turn that gold into victory? In this case, my opponent is has is playing Hlalu, so I can generate expensive cards into prestige directly. Um, other options would be crows, and other options would be just buying these um, tavern contract contract things from the tavern, like blackmail. That that converts into uh, that definitely converts into uh, power as well. So yeah, contract agents. Yeah, another contract agent. I'm happy to pick that up. It's another annoying thing my opponent has to break through. Uh, Bari veneration's fine. Discard gets rid of the gold cards. Fine. Let's see what else we can pick up. Um, no, nothing else really. That is too useful. So. Um, this game was actually a bit of a stomp. I was considering not posting this because uh, stomps are not too fun to watch, I guess. Like, not as interesting. But there's still some lessons to be learned from watching this. I mean, even I, I can look back at this and see my own my own mistakes uh, uh, that I made. I mean, even if I'm not playing at 100% perfectly, uh, still, still you can get a win. But uh, it's, it's good to see your own mistakes uh, from the back. And like, for instance, I... I feel like, you know, maybe I can try to not activate my agents a bit. Maybe I can find a way to kill that envoy before I activate my agents, but... Eh. I, I think at this stage, we are kind of insanely far ahead. I can even buy our Knight Commander, which I would certainly hope, I am, hope I'm buying. But, I mean, at this stage, this is pretty much the win, because we can use Halalo power to uh, turn something else into Prestige. I don't really care. Yeah, let's turn the Rally into Prestige. It's a good card, but uh, we are... Here. We can't even kill the Envoy because we have enough power to do so and there's no way he can take down my prestige because Rajin is not in the game. So um, yeah, pretty pretty uh, fast game, uh, pretty simple win. Basically I got very lucky at the start, I picked up Armory and then I picked up the right caller and from there on I just snowballed. My opponent was picking buying I would consider to be rather random cards that I disagree with. But yeah, uh, yeah it's a win. Thanks for watching.